than your first thoughts on Rajasthan squad. Do you think they are better prepared or do they have a better squad than last time? Yeah, so first of all, uh, Dekara, I definitely agree with you about these these two teams being, I think, several of the favourites to come in the top four. They, they uh, for various reasons, look look pretty well equipped. Um, you're looking at Rajasthan and you're thinking that not a great deal has changed between now and last year with with uh, possible one or two exceptions, which may have actually reinforced a, a, a score which performed pretty well last year. Um, particularly, I'm talking about the uh, addition of Jason Holder, as just looks to give them so much more balance if you have him at number seven, as a part uh, as opposed to say an Ashwin looking to pinch block early to try and lengthen the batting order and stuff like that. So they tried to kind of engineer a situation where they had a bit more depth last year, and uh, I think that they've they've done well to kind of react on that and and, and address that deficiency. Um, saying that, I think a lot is going to fall on on someone like Joss Butler. And I think it would be really unreasonable to expect him to have such an outlier season this year as he did last year. You know, I mean, that's that's one or one in a career season. You know, and if he was to to even replicate seventy five percent of that output, he would have have a really good year this year. So, you know that, and he got them through a lot of matches, and, and that's I think something that the burden of the run scoring has to to fall on the shoulders a bit more of a Padical and a Hetmeyer and stuff like that and a Parag who I, I, I can see improving year on year anyway. Uh, um, so those those players have got to step up a little bit in, in the likelihood that Butler won't be able to replicate that output. Fair enough. Uh, you know, that. do you still think that there are some plugs that they've not been able to fulfill? You, you talked about Jason Holder and I, I agree with you over there that you know they uh, they've they've plugged in that number seven role, but uh, do do you think that death bowling is still a concern because it was last time? Definitely, um, and and yeah, the obviously the injury to pressure Krishna as well in terms of the pace bowling stocks is 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 not uh, positive for them as well. But they do have some nice nice backup options. Uh, Nathalie Saini, Kuldeep Sen, KM Asif, all, all capable bowlers. But again. Probably not so much in the death bowling as a death bowling specialist, you know. Um, KM Asif from more of a power play specialist, particularly. So look, yeah, there, there, there's that question mark, and I think that that's something that they're going to have to address. But ultimately, I mean, I obviously worked in the auction last year, and and, and something that that was really really obvious for me, looking through running the numbers on 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 all all the players, you know, pretty much likely to get picked up in the auction. Was that there aren't many death specialists, and if you look at the potential lineups of, of each team, I think the there's a lot of teams who you can level the same accusation at that, that they're going to struggle with death bowling. I definitely don't think that the Rajasthan are alone in that. Hmm. Yep. So Dan, moving forward, there is certain element uh, in this season which we cannot not talk about, and that is the impact level. Now, Ricky Ponting said just the other day that impact player rule will eventually you know, uh, make uh, all-rounders obsolete. Uh, now, not it is not just the impact player rule. One other dynamic that has been added is announcing your 11 after the toss. Now, I mean, before we deep dive into each of these teams, I want to know from you, uh, because the last time that we when we spoke about just after the auction, uh, you were of the opinion that irrespective of the impact player, teams should field their first 11 the best living first, and then uh, try to see whatever they need to do on the day. But I think having this choice of uh, picking your eleven based on uh, your based on the toss really changes the dynamics, right? I mean, if if teams really just go with their best eleven, irrespective of their, whether they are batting first or bowling first, they are essentially uh, losing out, out on advantage of uh, uh, fielding twelve men, so to speak. No, for sure, and and it's I mean I don't know when this. Rule in terms of naming the two 11s was communicated to the franchises, but you know, throwing it in a couple of weeks before the tournament started probably yeah. isn't ideal planning preparation for teams if they if they found out at the same time as as the general public. Um, look, it changes a lot. I think you're absolutely right, Samesh. Um The ability to name two 11s really does enable you to structure up completely differently, and it'll be so interesting. I think to see how teams do look to do so because. In South Africa, 
uh, T20 quite recently, the teams had the, the same option of name. They didn't have impacts up, but they had they had the option of naming two 11s depending on the tox results. And a lot of the teams didn't bother. So you know, there's there's it's not a given that teams are going to be super efficient at this impact impact sub rule straight away. Uh, and and I, I would expect a lot of weird decisions and mistakes to start with for sure. Um, and maybe people, you know, not really being comfortable with looking to try and work out what this competitive advantage is. And we've also seen this in you know any league with kind of gimmicky rules, I suppose. And I guess gimmicky is maybe a bit strong, but the big bash for example with the, the bash boost point i mean like this it was really easy to construct a strategy around the bash boost point and yet teams were just like not bothered about they were they were quite willing to give up like a quarter of the points for the actual match just by not being in front after 10 overs and actually i ran the numbers before i can't remember the exact numbers but i think about three quarters of the teams who were ahead at the 10 over mark actually won the match anyway so so it was a really good guide as to where you would want to be at anyway so why wouldn't you try and get to that, that bonus point so yeah, um, I think a lot of teams. Yeah, as I say, well, a lot of teams will be maybe quite disorganised to start with. It's really interesting to read Ricky Ponting's thoughts. I had a good read of of that interview, uh, and and I do lean to to agree with with him about. I think he was more referring to kind of those bits and pieces players, you know, like maybe a number seven who bowls one or two overs kind of thing. Like maybe he has quite a low match involvement, you know, like seven to 10 balls with a bat, seven to 10 balls on average with a ball kind of thing. Those players, yeah, maybe they might become obsolete. Although I could see another argument and another way that that could develop as well, whereby say you, you might have a, a luxury player. So someone like a, a Shorat Khan who tends to bat number six or number seven, doesn't bowl. Um, if, if they make a name for themselves as an impact player, a few times could that almost present them with like a niche role and uh, which could be in a lot of demand you know from franchises in the future so it, i mean this is why i'm so fascinated by it because i think it's going to be an incredible extra tactical dynamic that we can look forward to this season and hopefully beyond as well if 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 i think the the gist of uh, the impact player and its usage is that you have to look at look at it as a as a help or as a lifeline, but you can't look at it, look at it as a cheat code. Because I think mm -hmm. if you start looking at looking at it as a cheat code, you'll probably be too 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 concerned about you know using that impact player rather than getting the balance right of your eleven from the beginning. Uh, I I suppose teams will have to you know resist the temptation of of doing this because I anyway think that. You know, to use this impact player rule, uh, teams need to have enough Indian quality because, you know, if you are anyway not having enough balance in the eleven, you will be using the four overseas players anyway. So you need to have the yeah. in, you need to have enough required Indian quality to use that impact player rule. So uh, even though the rules there, I, I I don't think all teams will be able to benefit out of it. Yeah, I I think for the impact player rule, we should we should just assume that it is for the Indian players. I mean. Uh, that's the best way to go about it. So I think for the ease of uh, our viewers and for us as well, maybe what we can do is start off with the 11s. Uh, what is Rajasthan's ideal bat first level and bowl first level and then uh, take it from there. What do you guys think? It seems fair. Seems fair. And in the meantime, we can also start taking a few questions that are there. Uh, yeah. So Dan, you, you go with your 11. Okay. And, so, uh, yeah. Sure. So first of all, guys, one sort of thing. How do you anticipate teams will structure up differently if they're batting with their batting first and their their bowling first elevens? Because it'd be quite interesting to think maybe to have a a little bit of a debate about that to start with before we before we run through the elevens. So I think it there are a few few venues which are toss agnostic, where it's not going to make a difference whether you are batting first or bowling first. Mm. Uh, like I feel some uh, like a Kotla is that venue. Uh, Mohali could be that venue, uh, and at the same point, there are a few venues which are heavily toss dependent. Uh, we have seen one Khede uh, to be when when you one venue where teams prefer chasing. Uh, then uh, Chepok in Chennai is one venue where even though there has not been many games that have held in Chepok in the last four years or so, but uh, the preference to bat first in Chepok is a lot more than at other venues because the pitch slows down and the ball starts to turn. So at toss agnostic venues, I don't think it's going to make a difference. 
uh, it might make a difference on a few venues like i mentioned so uh, if 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 you are playing so probably if you are playing at chennai and you know there is no there is not going to be dew and the ball is going to going to grip so if you are batting first then you will probably play an extra spinner instead of a pacer but if you are bowling first uh, then you might you know try and add a little more batting enforcement given how uh, batting becomes difficult in the in the second mm-hmm. half so yeah. that is that i think that is one line of thinking of course when you do when you it will change uh, and you know as we go along in the tournament because it's going to be summers in india the pitches are going to slow down so i don't think there can be a fixed strategy to this anyway like like how there can't be anything fixed in t20s anyway to begin with Hmm. Yeah. But actually, I have a very contrary view. If I, I, I mean, I feel that teams can really utilize this well if they plan properly. Maybe Rajasthan is actually a very good place to start because they're they're eleven agnostic of where if they are batting first or bowling first is pretty yeah. solid. So maybe mm-hmm. Dan, you can give your eleven, then I can maybe give you some of my reasoning where I feel that this rule can be used better. Let's do it. So I think first of all, I think it's important for me to say that. I I generally think that if you're going to bat first then you could look to to go a bit more batter heavy and then look to stop someone off later on I think that's that's pretty logical um the problem for Rajasthan is that they they don't really have any sort of noted backup domestic batters so it would be a lot to ask of a Dhruv Jurel or a Kunal Singh Rattore or Abdul Batis Batis to to start in 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 the games I think Uh, even though they've all got, I think, some ability and upside, definitely. Um, so I went with a kind of fairly generic eleven, if you like, of uh, Butler, Jaiswal, Padakal, Samson, Hetmyer, Parag, Holder, Ashwin, Bolt, Saini, Chahal. Mm-hmm.